really didn't have to do this, you know. I wouldn't have considered leaving you alone. Wouldn't your wife be worried about you? My wife's in Baltimore. <laughs> Excuse me. That was shamelessly coy and indirect of me. But to answer your question, no. My wife wouldn't be too concerned. It's none of my business, really. Bearing my emotional scars in public is a distasteful habit I've acquired over the years. I have no right to ask you or anyone else to do the same, believe me. Why not? It's just a search for kindredness and consolation, isn't it? What a desolate sadness to think that you're the only person who suffers in marriage. My marriage is an abysmal failure. A barely manageable disaster. So why stay? Why stay in it? You barter away so many pieces of yourself in a long-term relationship. I'm not sure I remember which are mine. Or how I go about reclaiming them. And then there are my girls. They're the light of my life. And I couldn't bear to lose them. But I'm sure your father felt the same way about you girls. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He wanted us with him all the time, really. Every goddamn minute for eternity. His voice echoing in our heads, his portraits and photographs plastered on our walls. Father, marching through time with us. His presence indelible. I had no idea you... Hated him a little bit? <laughs> it's only natural for a child to resist authority, don't you think? Father was the, uh, the ultimate authoritarian, the deadliest kind, the charming kind. The kind you want to please even when you know they're wrong. And later... Marsha! Much later, you'd realize you violated part of yourself. So, here I am. Years after his death. Resisting my father's authority. No, Daddy, it's okay to be alone with Vincent. I won't go home yet! Delayed reaction, huh? Yeah. Better late than never. Your family always seemed so happy. For years, I think, I've held you up as a kind of ideal to strive for in my own family. Not an ideal, an illusion. The surface of things, of course, we seemed happy. After Mother died, we were rewarded with Father's approval by doing exactly what he expected of us. Father wanted his first child to be a boy, so Olga gave up her femininity for him. And after Mother was gone, I became the woman of the house at 13. Hostessing, dinner parties, and faculty gatherings, a gracious southern belle. I remember. It was charming. It was unsavory. I was a midget Scarlet O'Hara. A child prodigy, Martha Stewart. It took me years to realize that it wasn't me, but a role I had adopted. I'm so sorry. But you seem to have realized yourself. Oh, yes. As evidenced by my performance this evening, I've become almost completely graceless, charmless, and tactless. Honest, I'd call it. I suppose I fared better than Andrew, who had to hand his balls over to Father. Only one pair allowed it in the house at a time, you know. After Father died, Andrew got them back. But strangely enough, he keeps looking for someone else to give them to. Hmm. Olga and I passed them back and forth for a while, but we really didn't want them. He finally found a real taker in Nancy, who it seems had been looking for an extra pair for quite some time. Ah. 
Irene was so young when father died, I really believe she's emerged unscathed. Most of her recollections of father are actually stories that Olga and I repeated to her. Father's greatest hits are things we simply invented, like the story she told over her birthday cake tonight. Father never said those things to her. We did. What? I know when someone's looking or thinking askance at me. It's just you pride yourself on honesty. Huh. You're brutally honest with yourself. Yes. And a lot of other poor, unfortunate souls. Yes. And yet you spin fantasies for Irene. Not fantasies. Simply a refined reality. Why not give her something solid to build on? Because it's imaginary. Fragmentary. Ultimately, it's not a true foundation. I'm sorry. Perhaps I've overstepped. No, no. You may be right. In theory. But all you have to do is look at Irene to see that she turned out pretty well. Yes, she is a lovely young lady. You seem to have a lovely time tonight, don't you think? Yeah, I thought so. Do you think my argument with Harry upset her? Actually, she seemed rather used to it. Oh, I suppose she is. I suppose everybody is. I guess what I'm really asking is if it upset you. It's always disturbing to witness an argument. Especially when it involves someone you admire. <laughs> and you can admire someone who brawls with her husband in public? Are you begging the compliment? Yes. Please, elaborate. All right. Your feelings towards your husband don't concern me. I find you to be a very attractive woman with strong character. Is that a line that works often in your travels? I don't have much occasion to use it. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you wanted me to be frank. I do. I did. I guess I'm just not very comfortable with your feelings. Or mine. I haven't flirted with a man in years. My responses are those of a coquette from another era. I have seen women outside my marriage. But my marriage is not a happy one. Who says when you want to get laid? I'm sorry. Uh, I've done it again. It's just a... <laughs> it's just a defense mechanism. No, you're right. It sounds like a cliche used by any man on the make. But it happens to be true. I'm a lonely man in a bad marriage. Please, I said I was sorry. And I assure you, picking up women for sexual purposes is never this soul-wrenching or time-consuming. I don't know whether to uh, apologize, thank you, or be insulted. I'm 
you're saying is this is not just a sexual thing. Do you realize that? Hmm? And is the feeling mutual? Is it? really just a good girl who's more comfortable fighting with her husband than cheating on him. I guess I'd rather be a bitch than a slut. Does caring for someone make you a slut? No. Expressing it does. share a cab. Would you mind dropping me at my place? I insist on it. What's wrong? Where's Andrew? He's at the hospital. What happened? Is he hurt? It's Irene. A drug overdose. What? Oh, no. Oh, my God. She could have died. For God's sake. And nobody would have been here. She could have died Shh. all alone with strangers around. Her. All right, now. We're here what now. Happened? She all right? She's Shh. fine now. She's resting. Where is she? Where were you? I was still at the college. I told you I had to clean up. For two hours? Stop. Oh, what difference does it make? We're all here now. She's in there. The nurse is giving her some medication. Have you seen her yet? Hey, wait, 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 wait. What, what, why can't I see her? Just a few minutes. Let her get settled. We saw her before in emergency.